A very good evening and namaskar to all the audience who are listening to us today. We are hosting this very special session with the best-selling author, Mrs. Lippi Parida, on a very auspicious day today, which is Eid and Akshay Tritya. Eid Mubarak to all of them who are here in India and who are their border par. So to every Muslim and to every Hindu, to everybody, Eid Mubarak and happy Akshay Trithya. Lipi Parida is an author, poet, photographer, and artist, recipient of the 2018 National Award, Make in India. For her excellence in the creative field, she has been writing short stories, poetry, and articles for newspapers and magazines for a long time. Her first book, a memoir on her grandfather's life, Aja's House, was much appreciated. Her second novel, If the Blue Lotus Sings, was a take on the unrest in Orissa during the 2015 Nabakala Vera ceremony, a one of its kind ceremony in the whole world. This 2017 novel brought her the Women's Achievers Award. Putting in two years of research on the Jagannath cult of Orissa, Libby Parida has woven, woven a tale of deceit and deception love and passion revolving around the blue god. So what does the blue lotus say? Let's find out from the author herself. A very warm welcome to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation today. So good evening, uh, Nisha. It's an honor to be on your show, um, taking forward uh, the campaign of We Shall Overcome. And uh, we are here um, gathered, uh, sitting uh, across each other on the auspicious day of Eid and uh, Akshay Trutia. And uh, like um, in the way of the remarkable way of the Indian army, I would like to put it across like, you know, they say um, Ram Ram Saab uh, Eid Mubarak Ho. So a very <laughs> happy Eid to all our friends and uh, a happy Akshay Trutia uh, too. Uh, today is supposed to be a very auspicious day when the sun and the moon are supposed to be at uh, they're very auspici auspicious positions. And Nisha, I think for me, just like uh, my uh, Blue Lotus, uh, which is the chief character um, of my novel, if the Blue Lotus Sings. So Nisha, Jeez. on this uh, day of uh, Eid, um, uh, let's um, share the thought of I am because you are, which is the th uh, thought of Ubuntu. And uh, also let's wish abundance uh, to all of our friends and to each other. How beautiful is the way to start the session, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, because you are so good with the words and I could not uh, thought of any other medium to welcome you than the words. So here is a piece of poetry on Eid for the people who are Bharat in Eid in our country and who are born in our country and who are born in our country and who are born in our country. There is a small girl. If you have permission, I will read it. Nisha, please go ahead. Let me hear those <laughs> lovely words composed by you. Yes, ma'am. Gar tu us par, main is par hua, to bhi hua kya? Hamari mohabbaton ka silsila gar yun hi hua, to bhi hua kya? Hamari nazdikiyon ka charcha to sara jahan karta hai. Main tera aur tu mera na bhi ho saka, to hua kya? ये दूरियां दफना नहीं सकती हमारी हम ख्याली को 
कभी ना कभी तो महफिल एक होगी खुशी से हम भी मिलाएंगे प्याली से प्याली को कभी तो दिवाली तेरे घर भी रोशन होगी कभी तो हम भी चखलेंगे तेरी सेवैया के मामी को कभी तो सरहदों की दीवार मिट्टी हो ही जाएगी कभी तो वादियों में फिर से बाहर लौट आएगी कभी तो मेरी आजान तेरी आरती बन ही जाएगी कभी तो माँ अम्मी और अम्मी माँ कहलाएगी तू मेरे रंग में मैं तेरे रंग में ना रंग सकूं तो हुआ क्या अलग अलग ही सही हाथ में हाथ ना भी हुआ तो क्या तू कटे या मैं कटू रंग तो लाल ही बहेगा ना आज नौका एक ना सही पर तूफान तो एक ही है ना सोच आज मिल जाए घर साथ में तो होगा क्या ये संसार होगा कदमों में और हम छू लेंगे बुलंदियां तू तू ना रहे मैं मैं ना रहू अगर हम हम हो जाए तो होगा क्या तू उस पार मैं इस पार ही सही तो हुआ क्या हमारी मोहब्बतों का सिलसिला कर यू ही हुआ तो भी हुआ क्या थैंक यू मैम सो नाउ आई एम सिंस लास्ट फ्यू डेज आई हैव बिन इन्वॉल्व विद दीज टू ब्यूटिफुल बुक्स मैम सो आई एम गोइंग टू ड्राइव राइड इन टू द क्वेश्चन दैट आई हैव फॉर दी ऑथर सो मैम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी वुड लाइक टू नो हाउ एंड वेन डिड यू स्टार्ट रियलाइजिंग दैट वर्ड्स आर द मीडियम दैट दैट एक्सप्रेस यू द बेस्ट लाइक वेन डिड यू स्टार्ट राइटिंग so so nisha i would like to tell you that uh, um, i was always very uh, good at handling words and uh, you know i i was very good at uh, my dis- uh, at writing essays you know i had a very distinctive write a style of uh, writing essays they were direct and simple and you know they d- did not have uh, much adornment around them and i had a beautiful style of narration and uh, the i always got the highest marks in the class you know and wow. uh, so, uh, so uh, my essays were uh, always the best and uh, i think that's how um, i took to writing because you know i was uh, always very good at writing essays you know i uh, i was very good at uh, handling words i think uh, that's how it began you know with my essays so it started uh, with the school time right it started yeah, as a right. very childhood wow so you're attached to many forms of art like um, you write short stories articles you are a painter you painting your paintings are at rashtrapati bhavan also so you're an author along with all the above you're a mother and a wife so how do you fit yourself into so many molds and which is the role that you enjoy the most so uh, uh, nisha i would like to tell you that um, um uh, i wonder whether you've read the works of ernest hemingway uh, ernest hemingway in his uh, real life he was fond of boxing he was fond of bull fighting and deep sea fishing and uh, you know all kinds of adventurous sports but and he put them all into his writing and uh, that is what made his writing so exciting and i think um, um, different facets of myself uh Chief. would uh, also you know come together to make my words more vibrant you know they are all Chief. a way of you know adding color to my writing and uh, in fact um, uh, uh, i would like to uh, uh, share with you this uh, incident where this hindi uh, hindi school uh, hindi teacher of mine you know uh, i had scored high on this hindi essay and she wanted to know which essay book i had written that essay from uh, she couldn't <laughs> believe that actually written that essay myself and uh, she good. wanted the, she secretly called me aside and asked me which is that essay book from which you have taken this uh, essay so you know uh, i think uh, all my experiences all my facets they come together to uh, make my words more vibrant and nothing is more closer to my heart than uh, writing and i think it is uh, um, through writing that i uh, put across uh, all the 
uh, ideas that I have for society, all the uh, thoughts and uh, all my activism, you know, I think I can express it through my words, you know. The words are uh, the best expression of myself. I think as a writer, I express myself the best. Gee. So, ma'am, um, uh, in your busy schedule, do you get time to write, sit down and write? And what is the best time? I mean, uh, during the day or when everybody is sleeping, that is the time when you find your solace and you uh, start writing. So, uh, so Nisha, uh, you must have heard many a time. People say that, oh, I'm having a writer's block. You know, I, uh, I, I just cannot write, you know. But this is, I don't believe the people who say this because, you know, uh, this is just an excuse for not writing because I think every time is a, a good time for uh, writing and even when I'm traveling, you know, I'm uh, jotting down in my diary or even, okay. you know, wherever I'm sitting, you know, I'm sitting in my garden, uh, I'm just uh, jotting down thoughts about nature and wherever I'm there, my diary and my pen are nearby and I'm all the time writing. I keep writing all the time. That's great because whenever the idea clicks, whenever the inspiration happens, maybe you are looking at something, maybe nature inspires you, you have to have that pen and paper in your hand and you have to start writing. It happens with me a lot also. So, so Nisha, the, I've, I've noticed you keep your diary and pen near you as well. I think you yes. would endorse this idea. Definitely, ma'am. You have seen me. I mean, it is always there. And, um, um, you know, because... Um, it just fades away if you just don't pen it down it just fades away the idea the inspiration so it's good to have a pen and paper on you always That's right. <laughs> That's so right. ma'am, um, though uh, we are talking about your second book, but um, I would like to start with the first one, which is a life sketch or a memoir of uh, <laughs> your maternal grandfather. So uh, how did you think of writing a novel or a book on him? So Nisha, uh, um, here I was writing these brilliant essays in all my in my school and uh, college uh, classes, and uh, everyone was loving them, and I was getting good marks for them. And then my maternal grandfather, to whom I was uh, quite close, he passed away, and uh, uh, I decided to write something in his memory. And then I had a series of uh, essays coming my way. You know about uh, his magical land of Jeripada and about him, yeah. about uh, you know his wealth and uh, his uh, uh, wonderful character. And you know, I was I had these series of essays that I was writing about him, and I compiled all of them together, and um, uh, sort of I came up with this um, book, which is uh, Aja's House, and it was much appreciated by all my friends, um, you know, who got to read it. Okay, okay. Because, um, yes, I have seen that there are different chapters in the book about, uh, you know, your ajas and your eyes, um, even puja room, and how they used to help the entire community, and how beautifully you have expressed the town there where they lived, and how special is that to your heart, which is beautiful to read, Bam. So, uh, if we talk about If the Blue Lotus Sings, your second novel, it is set in the town of Puri in Orissa. It revolves around the phenomena of uh, Nabal, uh, Naba Kalevara uh, ceremony about the temple politics, about the head priest falling in love. It has so many delicate issues to deal with. So didn't you feel uh, threatened to uh, introduce such delicate issues in your novel? So, Nisha, uh, I would like to tell you um, uh, that, uh, you know, we have these um, writers like uh, Sadan, uh, Sadat Hassan uh, Manto, Manto and, Manto. Uh, you know, uh, uh, who it is, uh, and Isma Chuktai, uh, you know, who with that Punjabi Urdu and that Lucknowi Urdu, you know, they are sort of, you know, they deal with very sensitive issues. While Sadat Manto, he sort of, you know, he says it like, see, like he sees it, like he feels it. And uh, um, Isma Chuktai is a little more subtle, right? Jeez. So these are, peop uh, these are people, you know, they are uh, uh, writers who are, uh, you know, uh, political activists as well. So, you know, I think their voice is so powerful. Important. But even yes. people like Shakespeare, who lie, uh, write about love and revenge and uh, fate. And even they also, they speak about 
you know body characters and uh, uh, the poor jokes you know just to add variety uh, to the uh, theme or to their Narrative. conformist themes so yeah. uh, uh, so nisha i would like to tell you that um, um, uh, conformism is uh, quite easy right but uh, you know to add variety to conformism you know people uh, uh, rather um, enjoy uh, what shall we say when we avoid uh, avoid uh, when yes. we talk about the true matters so there is this uh, uh, matters which are true actually you know which many do not you know decide to take up you know so the french yes. uh, sociologist uh, emil uh, durkheim he says that um, you know the ordinary life of uh, the humans is actually a prof is a profane life and uh, oh. what is sacred life the sacred life is something you know which is just set apart as you know uh, the high ideals of a society you know but yeah. what we actually experience is the profane so what yeah. uh, what we are actually experiencing uh, uh, is uh, our world issues you know and if we decide to talk about um, everyday issues then uh, i'm sure you know um, profanity would come into it for example my great grandfather who was in our family was the father of uh, the modern oriental literature uh, he was the first one you know who was uh, who wrote about uh, the exploitation of the um, landless peasants and uh, by the feudal lords and uh, this was before the october revolution before uh, marxism had set in this was the first indian novel to talk about the social evil so uh, so emil durkheim says that um, you know uh, the normal life of the people is actually profane if we go to uh, you know sort of uh, talk about the normal life of people it is uh, actually sensitive it is actually profane whereas you know when yes. we are performing when we are talking about sacred things we are talking about you know where everything is all right then it is uh, you know something it is a high set of ideals you know which has been set apart for a society so okay. uh, so um, and people also you know they uh, they like to uh, read about the profane you know what it is that uh, they go through every day what are the sensitive issues people appreciate that and uh, uh, and i think people uh, do like that ji ma'am and i think i can see that uh, having a voice and standing up for it uh is in your genes and that's how your writing style actually transpires it um i read somewhere that you said about the sick connection in the book so uh, you came to chandigarh and you launched your new novel which has a sick connection in it and you said somewhere that as if it was meant to be that my places where i was moving with my story was all connected so ma'am would you please like to tell us more on that Yeah so Nisha don't you think it's amazing I was in uh, Pondicherry writing this book if the blue lotus sings and I traveled to Chandigarh when uh, Chandigarh and the entire world was celebrating 450 years of Nanak Dev and uh, uh, here was my novel which was uh, talking about the unity of the all all the religions and especially of the special thick uh, connect to Jagannath Puri and uh, so when i moved here i uh, heard the uh, the evening aarti the gagan mein thal you know it was uh, uh, i could hear it uh, from the gurudwaras and i could hear it uh, from being relayed from the darbar sahib and uh, uh, i was reminded of my chapter ek omkar satnam in the if the blue lotus sings you know which speaks about um, uh, guru nanak dev uh, visiting uh, jagannath puri and um, uh, you know uh, there he is admiring the aarti in front of the lord jagannath and uh, then the uh, priest they come up to him and they say uh, um, sir you are no holy man you uh, you are not getting up while the aarti is being conducted uh, and uh, then uh, guru nanak dev stands up and he starts singing gagan mein thal you know which has now found resonance all over the world and in fact uh, it is a big celebration of nature and um, uh, um, lord jagannath you know um, inspired uh, nanak dev 
to uh, compose uh, Gagan Me Thawal, which is soon to be adopted by uh, UNESCO as its anthem. I think that's amazing. Yes. Unity that of uh, uh, Jagannath uh, with Sikhism. I think it's uh, yes. uh, amazing. Don't you think so, Nisha? Ji, and the timing was so right, as you said, it as if it was meant to be. So yes. um, uh, these incidents have everything has connection to each other. What I feel in the cosmos. So my next question um, actually tells me that I should read a brief expert from your book, Aja's House. So I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go ask you the question. So I must have yeah. been 10 or 11 when I came across a book called The Predictions of Nostradamus in a fancy bookshop in Bhuvaneshwara, the modern book depot, I bought it for what was then a royal sum of rupees 200, borrowed from my mother, and gifted it to Ajas on my next trip to Jaripada. Ajay was a fan of the visionary mystic Nostradamus, and he was thrilled to receive the book and put it away in the cupboard where he kept his favorite possessions. That gift was the beginning of a special relationship between Aja and me. So this is uh, an excerpt from your book. And my question to you is that your writing style has been really compared to the likes of R.K. Narayanan or Garish Kirnad. So I would like to um, ask you that was it all honest transparent uh, uh, expression of your thoughts or was it all intentional that you liked certain style and you adopted in your writing? Uh, uh, Nisha, uh, I hope uh, the others don't think the same way that I copied our <laughs> No, it was not intentional. <laughs> Not intentional, but you know, uh, uh, Arkin you know, whom we all of us read in our school days, you know, uh, he certainly must have had some kind of impact because uh, uh, I, I read somewhere about Arkin Narayan, you know, he says that I was uh, in sitting in Bengaluru and uh, I was scratching my pen and I was thinking about what I should write. And then uh, <laughs> the vision of uh, Malgudi, the village of Malgudi came uh, right in front of my eyes. And I saw the small railway station and Swami running uh, um, down uh, the railway line, uh, railway Gee. platform. And uh, that is how I was inspired uh, to write uh, uh, about Malgudi. You know the story, uh, stories about Malgudi. So Gee. in the same way, like Misha, when I was doing a research for If the Blue Lotus Sings, it was a two-year research uh, on the Jagannath Cult of Puri. Gee. And uh, um, uh, while I was doing this research, I thought I must create a place, you know, where, you know, all my, uh, all the Childhood. action behind the Puri Jagannath temple could be portrayed, you know. So I created this village of Keoli, you know, where the head priest Jagannath Prasad and all the other priests where they live, you know, uh, different uh, kinds of characters. It's quite an exciting world out there. Where uh, you know uh, they are boozing on uh, um, uh, old monk uh, um, and uh, you know having their um, uh, motorcycles and you know um, um, uh, they're having um, uh, heated talks and uh, you know um, uh, uh, shady deals and you know it's a very exciting place, the village of uh, yeah. Keoli and uh, I think. Uh, uh, I created it because I thought it was a necessary background for people to be uh, able to understand uh, what takes place in the Jagannath uh, temple, you know. This was the fictional okay. world that I created so that people could understand more about the temple politics of the Jagannath temple. Gee, I, and I really feel that uh, every author or any artist always is inspired by some other author or the artist. So uh, definitely, I mean, when I go through your books, it really reminds me of uh, uh, the, you know, the uh, the world of Malguri days. So definitely, Thank you so much, yes. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, ma'am, um, here's another one. My next question is connected with this. Since then. He made me feel that I was old enough to embark on a voyage of discovery into the supernatural with him. Peering into the mysteries of the unexplained was his favorite hobby and it became mine too. 
we spoke about time travel black holes pyramids yetis ufo's and the bermuda triangles the lost city of atlantis and double bodies so this was your conversations with your aja with your grandfather in when you were a child so do you think uh, ma'am that you know during your childhood the kind of environment that you have in your house it definitely impacts on your writing in future yes yes nisha uh, like we say the child is the father of the man and uh, you know uh, the things that we have been exposed to as children you know it definitely reflects in uh, in our adulthood and um, you know it was quite an uh, exciting uh, childhood where you know i was uh, discussing all these um, fun things with uh, aja and you know it made life uh, so much more exciting and uh, in my novel if the blue lotus sings uh, you would find uh, time travel you know where um, the um, um, where we have um, this uh, little dwarf uh, bali you know uh, okay. little dwarf coming to uh, little dwarf bali coming and asking uh, for a sacrifice right and uh, we have indra dyumna uh, traveling from indra lok uh, you know to uh, get his uh, temple inaugurated so time yeah. travel is also reflected in uh, if the blue lotus sings um, it very much my childhood very much uh, shows uh, in if the blue lotus sings too so Gee. i think uh, it's uh, that's it true that's true ma'am and i read somewhere that when you were launching your novel um victim said asked you the big the known name victim said asked you in which language did the blue lotus speak to you so we also want to know that in which language did it speak to you <laughs> so so nisha don't you think it's a very exciting question and because yes, it is. Uh, because uh, it's important because uh, the blue lotus is uh, inspired me to write that novel so you would be surprised to know that uh, you know ancient uh, um, chants ancient hindu chants uh, have been studied and researched and it has been uh, found that uh, these uh, chants they do not have any their syntax does not belong to any known language these are actually bird songs you know that have been incorporated uh, into a ritual form you know so uh, so uh, bird song the ancients actually used the bird song uh, you know they uh, gave it uh, a dignified place in their rituals okay. so okay. that it could connect them um, connect the uh, humans to the divine and uh, you okay. know ritual of agni kayana um, um, like you know it's a, a 12 day fire ritual okay. and uh, it was researched uh, that uh, this particular um, uh, ritual the chants that were used in it were actually you know the bird songs of two particular birds you know which have uh, which migrate to uh, india so uh, this was actually uh, a um, study conducted in the university of california and uh, i would uh, like uh, you to believe nisha that uh, my lily pool um, uh, beside my house was actually some kind of a uh, altar for a ritual you know where the uh, lilies were actually chanting to me and connecting me to the divine i would like you to believe that well wow, uh, i can I, believe that i can believe that my yeah. children always laugh at me when in the evening sometimes i i can speak to the setting sun and i can when it is raining i you very well <laughs> so um ma'am um, what i really liked about uh, if the blue lotus sings is the structure the ambience that you have created the scale the voices and the body of the characters in the story to have a love story in the middle of all the other major issues was an intentional way of storytelling or it came naturally to you so nisha i would like to tell you uh, about the allure of romance i think you know people uh, uh, people think that romance is maybe something only for the women 
but no romance you know love is um, something it is a feeling you know which uh, is special to every human you know it is uh, special to the humans uh, uh, as an emotion um, uh, to love and to be loved is the most Im- important emotion for every human being and uh, you know the psychologists uh, talk about uh, positive psychology they say that you know um, it's the positive psychology is very powerful when you look forward you know to something beautiful then you know your life becomes very optimistic it becomes very beautiful so you know the factor of love is something you know all humans like uh, be it books be it poetry you know uh, it might be about the sting of a scorpion but then when you bring the love other into it you know it becomes so very special so love has a very yeah. special place in the life of humans and i think without love any uh, canvas um, of life is incomplete incomplete yes it's very dull yes <laughs> so love you know or whatever kind it may be you know is uh, is uh, and there's another thing there is another aspect uh, in my novel uh, of the forbidden you know the forbidden is very very attractive to the humans because you know when you tell a human that no this is not for you humans do not like it because they do not like to be dictated to and they would like to know what would happen if i indulge in something that is you know forbidden dangerous something that is risky yes. what would happen True. maybe they do, they won't like to do it themselves in their own lives but they would like to explore what happens See. when one human you know indulges in some risk taking behavior what is the consequence of that so the forbidden True. fruit is very uh, sweet uh, for every human um, nisha and i think <laughs> the, uh, that is what uh, made if the blue lotus thing so attractive is uh, of uh, forbidden uh, the aspect of forbidden in it you know made with the blue lotus things very attractive uh, to its readers that's true because it is it deals with very serious issues of temple politics of um, priest of pandas but in the middle of it all there is a very beautiful love story which is flowing and that keeps the interest going that keeps the curiosity going so i would congratulate you on that and um, now we have a small rapid fire round for you so we would really like very quick answers um who's your favorite author So Carl Sagan Carl Sagan is my favorite author All right and which book are you reading these days Demon Demon Haunted World Demon oh. Haunted World All right what is it about So Demon uh, Haunted World uh, in this book Carl Sagan you know is uh, trying to tell us that you know uh, many of the uh, pseudo um, ideas that we have of demons and ufos and uh, things like that which is uh, they are uh, you know not true they are uh, uh, you know he's talking about a more uh, logical and scientific way of uh, looking at the world ji okay wow interesting and what did you learn from your own book while writing a book you definitely take away something it remains with you what was that so uh, so i think nisha i uh, uh, came to uh, i found a very beautiful answer to why people engage in deception which had been a big question mark for me why people mm. engage in deception i think that mm. was very that is what my the answer my book gave me beautiful what fit you have like to born as if not lippy padida Vincent van Gogh the famous painter my favorite <laughs> is the most wow. in the world to be a painter and especially Great Vincent choice. van Gogh just crazy Great about choice. painting <laughs> yeah i know i think it more than his life yes that's true that's true what a beautiful answer can you recall your fan girl moment with another author Yeah, recently, you know, uh, I met uh, William Dalrymple and his wife Olivia, and um, I uh, gifted him this um, gin that I had made, you know, uh, plaster POP gin, you know, plaster of Paris gin, you know, uh, oh. in the city of gins, right? 
William Dalrymple, yeah. and he was quite. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, he said, I met him. That's a good chin. Yeah. So that was a very cute moment. <laughs> yeah, I met him in Belfast at Jaipur Literary Festival, where he was presenting his novel on the Mughal Empire, along with some live music. It was beautiful, beautiful event. I met him then. So, uh, what's your favorite activity to break the writer's block? So, like I told you, Nisha, this uh, writer's block stuff doesn't exist. You know, it's just an excuse <laughs> that oh, I'm just having the writer's block. No, I don't think it exists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is a fun question. That one indulgence that you regret having, like eating chocolates or in the middle of the night or singing in the bathroom. What are your secret indulgence? So Nisha, um, uh, this is not a very big secret with people who know me, but I like uh, sniffing on top in time. I'm just addicted to the smell of top in time. <laughs> While I'm painting, you know, I like on, I like sniffing on top in time and keep on okay. painting. Love it. All right. Oh, but that's not great. I love to smell it. <laughs> like I like to smell coffee. I can smell coffee all day. So yeah, I can understand. So all-time favorite song. So it's um, uh, Lara's theme from uh, Doctor Zhivago. Would you like to sing two lines? No, no, not today. My uh, my <laughs> voice is not, uh, you, you know, uh, in its top condition. I've been having All a cough, right. so maybe some other time. Okay, ma'am. So any piece of poetry which is close to your heart? Yeah, Nisha, I would like to share with you because we are going through difficult times and I would Jeez. like to share this with you. Everyone's Losing Something by Odette Katra. Everyone's Losing Something. What did you lose today? Our routines have all gone haywire, taking our comforts away. Did you lose the privilege of a driver whom the lockdown forced to stay home? Or were you forced to cook your own dinner, pushing you out of the comfort zone? Are you sad that you lost a holiday that you had booked so much in advance, caught with the seeming unfairness of this unfortunate circumstance or did you lose a golden opportunity to have the biggest wedding you planned but just ended up with a small one no big crowds and no life band everyone's losing something a privilege an opportunity a chance but lucky are they who lose just these minor lucky things to otherwise smooth plans. Hmm. Someone wow. lost more than a, sorry, minor hiccups to otherwise smooth plans. Someone hmm. lost more than a privilege, a brother-in-law, an uncle, a friend. It's going downhill far too quickly. Can't wait for this nightmare to end. To end, yes. So Everyone's true. losing something or someone. We are all, we've all got to play our part and hang on to hope as we journey on. Brew is broken, but never losing heart. I think that's yes. uh, um, a message for all of, all of us uh, in these trying times, uh, Nisha. Um, so beautifully, so beautifully put, ma'am. Uh, hope uh, is the only factor that we can look forward to. I think praying is the only factor which gives you peace in these unpredictable and grim times. So, uh, ma'am, where I came across um, as we are uh, approaching the end of the session. So, in your book, at page number one, one hundred and thirteen. And aren't we all hoping for the word like that you have explained in uh, this book in your words? So here they are. The leaves were blue, like the blue lotuses blooming in the inky water. Pale swans sped by quietly, rudderless motors. White translucent birds flew around quietly. Some perched on the trees in the water. In the backdrop were mountains, blue 
sentinels glistening and guarding the flow of water. An old temple stood on the shore, its wall mossy and green. It is so beautifully expressed, ma'am. And I, I think that everyone is looking for that, uh, that section of the sky where we used to breathe freely, where liberty was there to go out and have a cup of coffee with your friends. And um, another few lines, ma'am, from your page number 136 of your book, a key for every problem, a light for every shadow, and relief for every sorrow and a plan for every tomorrow. The blue God had a greater plan for everyone. So um, with these beautiful lines, ma'am, uh, we would like to thank you because uh, you came on a very short notice. You accepted our invite. You understood our campaign. You understood our intentions to reach to those people who are suffering from COVID, who don't have anyone to give them food, nutritious food, which they, their body requires. So uh, Dear Desi Catering Services, the browser publication and the narrators got together to do this kind of a campaign where we can deliver the books on the discounted rates and where we can deliver the free meals to these patients who are suffering from this uh, virus. Thank you so much, ma'am for always supporting our cause. So Nisha, uh, I wish you all the best uh, yes. on this uh, uh, campaign, uh, we shall overcome and uh, wishing uh, everyone abundance on this beautiful day of Akshit Ritya. And uh, 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 Nisha, um, um, I'm sure uh, your noble endeavors are going to mu multiply on this uh, auspicious day. And uh, in, in, in uh, sharing lives, our happiness, I think that's the uh, greatest uh, human uh, thought, you know, I think uh, ever created. So, so Nisha, uh, wishing uh, all of us, all our viewers, um, more courage, more fortitude, stay strong, and uh, we shall definitely overcome. Thank you, Nisha. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.